So there's a new update from a company called Figure AI that is building robots. The founder of the company is Brad Adcock, and he's been involved in a few different startups before, one of them including uh, vertical takeoff and landing, sort of these air taxis. One of his companies went public, it seems like, and this is his latest venture, and it's demonstrating that this robot is able to make a cup of coffee using a Keurig. So it seems like it was trained end-to-end uh, -end on video, and it looks like it was able to successfully achieve the task. And it looks like there's also some ability to self-correct mistakes. So here it's kind of like doesn't put the Keurig cup in there correctly. It needs to adjust it a little bit, which I do too pretty much every single time I make a Keurig. It's so hard to just plop it in there correctly. So good job, robot. Here's another shot of this robot kind of walking around and moving, swiveling its hips and whatnot. So it's able to walk. And so this isn't his first technology company that he got off the ground. So it says here, since founding his sustainable air mobility company, Archer Aviation in 2018, Adcock has moved on to a new startup, Figure AI. So Archer Aviation is a vertical takeoff and landing, sort of like an air taxi that's um, kind of like an Uber, but for the air, so it can take off, fly around, stuff like that. Looks like Adam Savage went on there about a year ago to see how well it performs. So one thing that was interesting to me is that, you know, they have a lot of demos for these air taxis. They have a lot of um, really cool animations. You know, here's, for example, this is where the people watch over how the thing is flying around, right? Because it's supposed to be, you know, autonomous. Nobody goes in that cockpit. It just kind of flies around by itself. And these are the people that sort of monitor what is happening in there. You know, here's kind of a shot of how that's supposed to look like. I mean, this is an animation. I don't think that's actually flying around New York City. You know, and here it's going to be being taken out for a test flight. So again, this is about a year ago. So this is December 22nd, 2022. So here it is. It's being wheeled out on a little on a little cart, not sure why it's not able to move around by itself, but so they, they pulled it out, right? So the propellers move up and then, you know, it starts up. So it's able to take off and this is supposed to be completely autonomous. So there's nobody in there. It's fully either remote controlled or, you know, flying autonomously. So it sounds like it flew about half a mile, they said, out. It was able to turn around and then fly back pretty low altitude and then it was able to land once again. But I can't get too much um, actual footage of this thing, you know, flying around how well it does. There's a lot of really cool cinematics, like there's these shots where it's nice and polished up. But, you know, here's some people walking towards it. So it is on the stock exchange, but it looks like it doesn't have any revenue yet. And so at the end of 2023, so he's publishing this AGI. So he's showing like new lab ready for 2024. It says AGI lab. And then they posted this new video with the robot making coffee. So interestingly, the, the person puts the coffee cup in there, not the robot. So what's interesting here, so that, you know, this gentleman comes in carrying the Keurig machine or whatever this coffee machine is. Since the robot makes the coffee right afterwards, uh, the machine must be plugged in already, as you'll notice. I mean, he's carrying it, but there's a cord. So it must be, you know, he must be standing just outside the camera with the machine plugged in and then he carries it over here. The cup is already in front of the robot. And then, so he sets that the Keurig machine, he sets down the, then he sets down the Keurig, the K-cup next to, and I'm, I'm calling it Keurig, I don't know what this, this might be some other brand or whatever, but the little coffee pod right next to the cup, and then he's going to pick up the cup and put it into the machine. And then he tells the robot, hey, make me some coffee. And then the robot goes to work. So he opens up the Keurig machine, inserts the little container in there and closes it and then pushes the button. Now, I might just be being paranoid here, and I apologize if I do, but we've had some uh, shenanigans with a lot of these demonstrations before. We had a few founders going to jail because they just, you know, instead of building an actual electric vehicle, they just rolled one off a hill and then somehow, you know, use that to raise a bunch of money. So I'm not saying that this is the same thing is happening here, but I mean, it does look a little bit weird because it does seem like they've used the, the cup as a marker almost for, you know, placing it right next to the, the cup so that the robot, he picks up the little pod right there. That's like resting against the cup. So as you notice, it's resting against the cup. Then he takes the cup, he puts the cup in there and then he's asking for the cup of coffee. So the robot, right, he goes in and he picks up that thing that's resting right there. So I don't know. I mean, I would love to see more of this so we can tell exactly what's happening here. Dr. Jim Fan reposted this 
He's the senior research scientist at NVIDIA. And this person, I believe, was on the, the Voyager paper and the Eureka paper alongside of Jim Fan. So he's saying, two years ago, I was shopping for a coffee machine at Target. I found a perfect Keurig, not for me, but for my robot. Round trade to insert a K-cup lid open slash close with weak forces, meaning you don't have to push hard to lift the lid and then coffee out with one button click. There's no magic. Human ingenuity is behind every robot success. And so here he demonstrates, so as you can see, you know, you're able to open it with just a slight push upwards. You put the cup in there and then you push it down. And so he's showing how coffee making can be done with just two fingers. And then, so they bought that machine back to the lab and they were able to get an end to an imitation learning policy to solve the task within two weeks. So as you can see here, you know, this little machine with just a little pincer grasp is able to pick up the thing, put it in there, push down on it and hit the, hit the play button. And so they were able to build that within, within weeks with that one R. And the trick there seems to be, you know, just picking up the right machine to make the coffee. So notice it doesn't touch the cup. It doesn't touch, you know, it just picks up the little K-pod, puts it in there. You say he's very happy to see that, you know, his work has inspired many great works in the community, including the, you know, the recent breakthrough, uh, at figure robot, which you can see here. Incredibly does the same thing. Bravo. Bravo. Let's take a listen to this clip with the founder and see what he has to say. So really what we're doing here in a nutshell is we're trying to be able to build a automation system, a autonomous automation system to be able to do human like work. Uh, we've, uh, are now walking our first generation robot and it's now doing complete end to end applications in our lab here. So we're hitting a button and it's doing like real human level work, <laughs> which is pretty, it's pretty crazy. And, uh, we're working to, uh, now to make that much more robust. We are running our AI systems and inferring all, all that on board with really powerful GPUs. Uh, we have like several thousand teraflops of uh, GPU capacity in the next generation robot that we're bringing up right now. Uh, so I think this is, um, again, not a really thing where we want to introduce autonomous systems into the world. It wasn't really possible. And I, I would say the last thing that here that's a, been a, a tremendous breakthrough for, um, for the robotic space has been the emergence of large language models. So we're going to be able to take a robot from the warehouse into your home through language. So there's just this need for like a semantic grounding of all the world's uh, knowledge that we're going to get through language. Meaning I'll be able to, as a robot, interact with a human, be able to understand what you mean, and to be able to actually plan tasks based on what you're saying. And we're going to use all that through language. And we're spending a decent amount of time here now with our AI team, building different types of vision language models to be able to demonstrate those capabilities. With any kind of variability that we might see, it's going to be relatively impossible to hard code these answers into the robot to be able to do. Uh, so to be frank, we do have C++ code in our systems. We do have control algorithms and stuff. But over time, I think that will be abstracted away. Uh, over time, this will be basically a fully neural net run system. And we're trying our best to get there as fast as possible, but it's, it's hard because we don't have a fleet of robots in the market. So there's a lot of things that he's talking about here. So here he's mentioning that, you know, large language models have been a great breakthrough and that his team's building different types of vision language models to be able to demonstrate these capabilities. So he's not using something that's open source. They're building their own large language models from scratch. It sounds like with his team, he's saying we, we do have C++ code in the systems, but eventually over time, you know, it's going to be a fully neural net run system. So I've listened to a few interviews with him to try to kind of understand what exactly they're building, kind of like what their competitive advantage is. So he was on Ark Invest. So he was on, I guess this is the Peter Diamandis podcast, the Moonshot podcast. So a lot of what they're talking about is, is very general. So it's hard to understand exactly, well, where are they? What have they accomplished? What's their new thing that they've been able to do? Because, you know, with Google, with NVIDIA, with a lot of these other people, you know, they publish the research so we can take a look at it and we see, okay, here's what they're doing. And other people can try to see if they, they replicate it. Here it's kind of like, well, they're, they're, they're saying they're building their own vision language models, which, which seems like it would be pretty difficult to do, especially at a time when the AI talent, the people capable of building something like that is very scarce, right? If they're in the Silicon Valley, right? They have 
you know, everybody hunting after that talent, right? They've got OpenAI and Google and Microsoft, and Microsoft, like everybody all over the world that's that's a player in this game is trying to get anybody with any ability to work on stuff like that out of the market. The GPUs to run something like that is very expensive. I think GPT-4 was estimated to cost something like $60 million. So he's saying he and his team, they're building the, the vision language models for the robot. Like I'd be curious to know more about that. Any, any like details on that? What's interesting is one of these podcasts podcast that he's doing uh he's saying so yeah so the robot is up and it's walking around it's working right now uh it's walking around the warehouse like he seems to be pointing like in the background like it's working and peter i guess says call it over here so i i don't know what happened i guess it's not available it can't can't walk over yeah so the robot is up and it's 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 working now it's working today we're walking call it over uh, come on hey, come on yeah, over. Like, what if, yeah sorry like yeah um so We'll, we'll be putting out, we're, we're going to try to, I figure, try to build in public as much as possible and keep the, basically everybody abreast of what we're doing. So yeah, I don't know. I wish them the best of luck. Uh, but before, I mean, before I would get excited about something like this, I feel like we got to have a little bit more meat to sink our teeth into. I would love to know exactly what, how they're making this robot function. He is saying that they're going to be doing more sort of building in public and showcasing a lot more of their work and showing videos and, and what the robot is doing and stuff like that. And we would all love to see it. I Hopefully it's going to be kind of unedited videos because they produce excellent demo videos, really cool, shiny looking things. But can we just see it like the uncut, you know, in the, in the warehouse, you know, unproduced, unpolished, just have it walk around and, and do, you know, pick up stuff. And just so we can see kind of like what it's capable of doing right now. If it's, if it's doing real work in the warehouse, can we just, you know, like pull out a phone and just like, get an iPhone video of it, like walking around doing stuff that will kind of, I think really show that they have something because right now it's so hard to tell. So with that said, my name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching.